welcome back, everyone, to K and K Indie Gaming Corner. Um, Connor, I, I know you've technically been a guest past on the show. We've had kind of a rebranding, so that's why it's not Real Dudes Podcast anymore. So, I, yeah, I was a little caught off guard by that. I didn't realize we were doing like a whole different thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's still like same great show, same great topics, same indie developers and indie games uh but it's just kyle and myself now so we decided okay. why not just make a quick name change so are you, are you still real dudes like physically in your space are you are you a real dude yes i'm a real dude i'm a real okay. person at heart okay, you know sure. rdp is still you know you know it, my first true love <laughs> But uh, yeah, we're we're excited. We're we were off the hiatus now, so we're no longer on hiatus. We just started recording literally yesterday. Got it. Wow, man, that's a uh, that's something. So wait, it's KK Indie Review now. In, indie Interview. Uh, K K and K uh, Gaming Indie Corner. Indie, or is it Indie Gaming Indie Corner? Or is it Indie Got Gaming it. Corner? I'm still trying to work on it. <laughs> it's a new show. It's fine. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> So how are you, Connor? It's been a little while. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm all right. I just finished my uh, my second year of college. I that was two days ago. What is it? It's the ninth. That's three days ago. Very my last nice. Day of college finals are over. Passed it through. I'm moving into my new place on the 28th, so I'm very excited about that. Uh, and I'm keeping myself extremely busy as always. <laughs> Hence, you're on the I, show I again. Stop. Oh goodness! This is my first interview in a while. I miss doing this. Same, same. Uh, so last you, time we talked to you, Connor, you had just finished an incredible, amazing concept album. Oh, that was our last interview. I was yes. Thinking, I was thinking you were going to say Summerland. No, yeah, no. Yeah, we did talk about music. Yeah, <laughs> that, was, that was a lot of fun. Uh, how did that oh, – yeah, yeah. I haven't talked to you, really talked to you because you performed that album live. I did. How did that go? I did a few times. Uh, it's, it's been great. I got a whole band together. Uh, it was a three piece that first show I, I went to. I was doing uh, bass and vocals. Uh, my friend Jacob on guitar, and then the the most talented individual in the world, Jonah, uh, on drums. And we've since expanded into a five piece band with a keyboardist slash backup vocalist and a saxophone. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's been a very fun live setting to to be a part of. We have some more shows hopefully coming up, but uh, we are all. Well, half of us are college students, half of us have full-time jobs, so it's a bit hard to organize that, but it was incredibly, incredibly rewarding and fun to be able to do that. Dude, that's awesome. Are you, like, exclusive to just West Virginia at the moment? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're very small-scale in sure. terms of the live landscape. Again, schedules <laughs> are extremely difficult. Um, if anything required us to drive more than, like, an hour, we'd probably <laughs> have some sort of conflict. Uh but no, I, West Virginia for now, which I'm happy with. I, I consider what I do more of like studio music anyways. Mm -hmm. I, I thrive in the sit down and write studio setting where I can tinker with synthesizers and have my time to figure things out. Sure. Uh, I, I much prefer that. And I, it, it kind of translates into the game development mindset. And I view both art forms kind of the same. Like mm -hmm. I, I'll sit down. I don't perform coding. <laughs> like I, That's I, true. I, I yeah. sit down and I'm like, okay, let's develop a product. That's kind of how I view it. That sounds so like business and cynical, but like in my mind, I'm like, let's make this product mm -hmm. um, and let's make it the best it can be. So I make, I make my music in that mindset the same I would a video game. That may, I mean, that makes total sense. I mean, I, it always fascinates me when someone's creating in two different media um, platforms, I guess. I, I, like how, I like finishing one thing, like one big thing. Well, I mean, even then, like you even even with that album, you had like a small experience that that went along with it as well. So you were busy uh, yeah, it's for hard that to call that a game. It wasn't really yeah, a game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's why I said experience. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, that was a little thing I thought of like as an after thing. Okay, uh, it took me like two months, I think, to like put it all together. It wasn't like a huge deal, but I thought, hey, it's a it's a fun way to market the album to mm -hmm. have a little extra reviews. We're not crazy about it but that's fine <laughs> i wasn't expecting much from it again it was just a little small side thing sure sure i mean i i when we talked about because I, I didn't technically review it on the podcast because it wasn't a full game and i felt no. like it was a disservice to review uh an experience that was maybe 10 minutes long no it was definitely meant to just be a thing that goes with the album yeah like kind of follow that story and I uh, think it it, it complemented well, um, but in at a the very time, abstract way. Yeah, exactly. 
But aside from that, we're not here to talk about your last project. We're here to talk about another project, which I'm surprised to hear from you so soon when I saw... Which, which one? Which I'm working <laughs> on like three things. <laughs> uh, is it We Never Leave? Is that the, yeah, the one? We, we uh, Never Left. We Never Left. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I am making that. <laughs> oh, so it's not done yet. Well, no. Okay. Yeah, it's done. It's okay, done. Okay, okay. I, I, made, I made that. It's not out. Okay. Actually, yeah, it's when not is this air? When is this? Probably when is this air? next. This time next week. Some next week. Okay. All right. I'll give some leeway. It'll probably come out like as of listening to this. It, give it like a week, maybe like okay. five days or something. We have an ETA of May twentieth. Okay. That that is what we know. I I cannot say that it is coming out May twentieth. That is against the rules because. I don't know. But what I've been told I can say is that it's probably going to come out around May 20th. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just looking at the Steam page, and there's no official date set on the Steam page. There's a, they, they've, like, they've done it in like comments and stuff. They replied to like YouTube comments saying mm -hmm. May 20th. They've told us May 20th um, as, a, as a tentative release date, and they've been semi-public about it. Okay, so it's not totally wrong for you to say May twentieth at the moment. No, no, I, I, this is this is public information to okay. a, to okay. an extent. <laughs> so, can you talk to me first before we actually talk about the project itself? How? Because I know it's part of an anthology series, so it's not just yeah. you that got involved with this whole the project as a whole. So, how were you approached, or, or did someone, or did you approach the the creators that were had this idea? I I was approached by um, her name. Her name is Abby Smith. I don't. She goes by Scruncho as well. Okay. Um, but she reached out to me. She's been involved with um, Dread X collections in the past uh, as a developer and as a voice actress. She's actually done a lot of stuff with. I don't know how niche this is. Uh, do you know Timor Dev? I do not know. Who did Timor? The, like the series of like the mannequin dudes that are like stiff straight up. There's like seven Timor games. No, I haven't. I haven't played these. She, she's done voice work for a lot of his stuff as okay. well as just a lot of Dread X stuff in the past. Um, she's directing Collection 5, which is what I'm going to be on. She reached out to me on Twitter. I was the last person to be contacted, um, which meant I had like two days to come up with an idea for my game. <laughs> uh, that, that's how it came to be. Uh, Abby reached out to me on Twitter. Very nice. So were you – so obviously you said yes. So what yeah. is We Never Left? What is your your slice about? Okay, I, I feel like I should specify exactly what Dreadx collection is. Before yeah, oh yeah, that'd be important that. too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so for anyone who is uninitiated, um, Dreadx collection uh, is a series of anthologies. So there's multiple of them. Uh, there's been collection one, two, three, the hunt, which is technically four, I guess, uh, okay. and then the upcoming collection five. Each collection gets roughly like seven to 12 developers who dread X feels are some of the better up and coming developers in the industry right now mm -hmm. to come together and make a horror game under a certain theme within a certain time constraint. And then those games are all tied together as one game that are like connected by one hub game. Mm -hmm. uh, and the hub games are like thematically connected to each other. It's a really cool concept. Like the first dread X was make a game that's PT inspired. That was the oh, first one. It was very, gosh. <laughs> it, it was a very like informal thing. It was uh, a little ragtag, but it wasn't like a series yet. They didn't know what was going to come of it. Caught huge steam, um, which led to collections two, three, and four, all having like crazy production value. Some amazing developers like David Szymanski has been involved with a lot of these, um, who wow. better known as like Dusk Dev. Mm -hmm. Um who who else like crazy? Um, Mr. Pink. I don't know if you know him. He did Golden Light. Oh, okay, yeah. Very good horror roguelite. Yeah. Um, very good horror roguelite. Um, David Szymanski, Mr. Pink. Um, my, the upcoming collection that I'm a part of has developers uh, like Darkstone Digital, who have done the Mortuary's Assistant. Okay. Which is uh, an indie horror demo that kind of took off on Itch.io. A full version coming out at some point. Not sure. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and the developer behind Lakeview Cabin is also in this collection, which is crazy. Because uh, I remember watching Lakeview Cabin like long time ago. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's not, yeah, it's a series of anthology games. Uh, and my contribution is We Never Left. So Collection 5, they approached me and they told me the theme was entertainment. Uh, which means make a horror game revolving around music or a festival or movies or something. I decided to do um, a classic 80s text adventure game. Oh. Like, you know, the type of stuff where you type in, you're like, go to the chair, Mm -hmm. like pick up the sword, like that type of stuff. Um, And I decided to do something like that. So you get a call late one night. It is a a dark and stormy night, just like tonight. Classic. um, (laughs) You get, a, you get a phone call from someone you don't know saying, hey, um, this, this is kind of weird, but your cousin has gone missing. Uh, he works he works for our company. We haven't heard from him for a while. Uh, we went to check on him, but we only found a note. And that note just had a message that said, finish the game and your contact information. So the game opens. You're exploring your cousin's house, trying to figure out what happened to him solve the mystery of the disappearance and I, and I should mention as you go there is the involvement of text adventure gameplay okay okay so were you what was you what was the time stream if i'm allowed to ask from the time you were contacted to the time you know you have to be finished by I, they haven't announced it but i also they haven't been secretive about past ones it's, okay. it's probably fine two months <laughs> okay <laughs> I was I was given two months to make We Never Left, which is very very generous compared to past collections. Pa- past collections were very game jam style. So you know, probably a couple days or even a week kind of thing. Uh, I think the first one was a week. Okay. And then subsequent ones have like slowly done more. It was like like a week, ten days, two weeks maybe. Mm-hmm. This one we got two months, and that's a lot. We we got a lot of time to work on our respective projects. I've played a lot of them. Um, it's pretty amazing. Well, based on the trailer, one of them kind of remind me of like look like like Midsummer the movie. Almost. Yes, uh, okay. Hans Vody. Yes, yes. That, that is by that is by Rup. Um, t- t- oh, I'm gonna mis- mispronounce his last name. Uh, hold on, I'll find it real quick. But okay. that is very inspired by Midsummer. It is called Hans Vody. Um, that Rup, Rup Tam Taminen. Okay. I'm going to feel really bad if I'm mispronouncing mm-hmm. that. But he did Lakeview Cabin, and this is his first uh, attempt at 3D games. Oh, wow. He's, ne- he's never done anything in 3D before. Uh, I have had the pleasure of sitting in on a stream of this one being played. Mm-hmm. Uh, very impressive work. In- incredibly impressive work. It, is- it also does something that I think more horror games need to do, and it combines a lot of comedy. Interesting. Almost like um, a... Like a get out almost kind of thing, but that wasn't. There was some comedy, but not like comedy. comedy. Well, Jordan Peele is so good at that. He Jordan is. Peele, first and foremost, Jordan Peele is a comedian. Yep, absolutely. And you could tell. And his, I think when horror movies add comedy or horror anything adds like a layer of comedy, it intensifies the horror because there's such yep. a juxtaposition there. Uh, yep, and I, I think, agree. I think Roop uh, killed it on that front. That the okay. game is funny. Like there are parts that made me laugh when I was when I was watching it. Um, but it, it's unsettling at points, and I, I look forward to people's uh, reception on that one. I, I can't wait to dig my teeth into it. But for you, Connor, because you've yeah. never really done like a horror game, you've had—I feel like you've I'm had not, thrillers, but not necessarily. Yeah, I like, mean, I guess horror. I guess Colossus kind of had that eerie element. Yeah, yeah, it did. I definitely wouldn't call it horror. So, were you intimidated by trying to do something that was? essentially an element you haven't explored yet i was nervous i was very nervous i never done anything in that vein before um so it was a lot to kind of try to take in but i think i pulled it off in the end i Mm -hmm. i took a lot of inspiration from like a24 type movies okay uh when you think of stuff like the lighthouse or Mm -hmm. hereditary um that type of more subtle suspenseful uh, atmospheric type of horror i was trying to achieve that um along with a lot of aesthetic inspiration from classic movies like Halloween was a big one for me, uh, as well as Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Okay. Wow, you've uh, you've pulled some like wild like you went from like 
almost like psychological thriller. It's a gory as well. So that, that'll be interesting. Yeah, no, I, I love the um, aesthetic ideas, but uh, Halloween is a huge one for this mm-hmm. game. Halloween is a giant inspiration for this game. And I, I think it comes through very okay. well. Stranger Things to a degree. There, okay. There's some, definitely some of that 80s pastiche look to it. Very nice. I'm, I'm so excited. So uh, a week and a half from today. So I'm excited to sink my teeth into this. Uh, roughly. We can't confirm that. You're right, right. Can't confirm it. Can't confirm it. Uh, but when it comes to We Never Left, do you feel like you're going to take the experience you've learned with this into your next project or current projects you're working on? Yeah. No, um, a thousand percent. Uh, I, I mean, I'm not going to say too much because it's extremely sure. early, but I am working on a, a horror-esque project. Um, and this was this was before DreadX reached out to me. Okay. I, I was working on this, and I, I kind of like halted it um, to work on this DreadX project. It's taught me a lot about like working in horror. And I'm, I'm very excited to continue the, the bigger project I was working on before that. Um, most ambitious thing I've done by far. Mm-hmm. Uh, but... Yeah, I'm definitely going to be using what I've learned from this collection, if, if that's that's the best I can give. Sure. <laughs> can you say, like, the biggest you – know, you, you can be as vague or as detailed as possible. Like, the biggest lesson you learned doing uh, We Never Left, working in horror, uh, that you feel like you can take over into your next project. Are, are, we ta- are you saying, like, working specifically in horror, biggest lesson? Yes, yes. Um, it is true that less is more. Okay. But but sometimes less isn't enough. <laughs> I, you always you always hear you gotta be subtle. You gotta make sure it's real subtle. Um, I was very subtle my first draft of We Never Left, and it was not scary in the slightest. Gotcha. You, re- you really have to find a balance. There mm-hmm. there is a there's a seesaw teeter totter of like jump scare gore fest and mm-hmm. extreme subtle psychological stuff, mm-hmm. um, and you really have to find the balance there because again the first draft was not very scary according to the testers. Okay. Testers, um, I've, I've ad- I adapted it from that, added some more um, upfront scariness, mm-hmm. and not too much. Like It's still very subtle, I think, compared to a lot of horror games you see. But um, I feel so pretentious saying that. Like, compared <laughs> to other horror games, no. Um, but no, it, it is a very subtle type of horror. It's a very um, make you get closer, lean into your screen a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, you, there's like the sounds. I worked very hard on getting the sounds just mixed how I wanted them to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think it all comes through. I ram, I ramble, but I think it, I think it comes through. Do you think so? The testers now have given you the kind of feedback that you're proud with yeah. for this project. Okay. Uh, I, I, one of them said it was terrifying. Oh wow! I, and I've had some independent testers. Um, <laughs> I remember I had my roommate playing it and we have a very thin wall like my wall is right here by my computer okay uh they were in here playing it and i went out to the living room so i wouldn't bother them while they did i i was hearing sounds (laughs) i was hearing them do like the little (laughs) (laughs) i was hearing some like oh god oh god oh god oh god moments that's exactly what you want to with a a project like this ah that made it made me very happy do you um gosh i want to ask about the next project but you, like, you can ask things, and I can okay. I can be extremely vague about it. Okay, okay. I'm so not I'm not under, under contract or anything because it's just fire games. It's that's not true. like a, but it's um I don't want to give too much in case I end up not making it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just so early. I I may have started and dropped so many things in the past. I don't want to like this is this is going more in line with the things that I have finished. I will say. Okay, okay. I'm 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 more I'm more into this than I have been with previous things I've dropped. Um. And in terms of like thinking about Summerland and how that mm-hmm. started, like this is feeling Summerlandy, okay. In my creative process, so I'm like, okay, this is going to be the next one. That's but exciting. I got to have that safety net in sure. case I end up canceling everything. So, how long after Summerland did you start working on this? Oh, geez, um, that's a good question. Let me check my Unity uh, project folder. <laughs> Because I don't actually remember what, what did I call it. Because I, um, I know when you finished Summerland, you said at the moment you were focused on like fixing Summerland and getting up and running to a place you were happy with with bugs and such. You weren't even thinking about another project yet. Yeah, no. Uh, this says, and I kind of toyed around with the idea a little in my head first, but it was created at uh, <laughs> January 9th. Okay, of this year. Yes. Okay. Oh wow. That's very recent then. Okay. Yeah. So January 9th was the start. 
um, I have like four documents of like ideas and some script and uh, that's that's the hardest part. The hardest part mm-hmm. is getting ideas. Sure. I know I know what I want it to be about. It's another narrative. Mm-hmm. It's another Summerland esque narrative. Um, a bit less walky. Okay. Than Summerland, so we're getting a little more gamey. Um, but like coming up with like the details i know the themes and i know what i want the general story to be but like Mm -hmm. having like little gameplay things and like do i want to have like a collectible here or do i want like an enemy type like what that type of stuff is hard oh i I could i totally see that like i'm struggling with environments right now environments is a big one right now okay okay because i remember with uh with summerland you had a couple easter eggs like callbacks to past games you had your yeah. band in in the game as well okay yeah. um are those ooh are those kinds of easter eggs and we never left i don't believe i i, I made this very much its own entity because i don't want to okay. bog down the like collection itself with like references to things that aren't collection sure types there are definitely easter eggs there 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 are some little things not exactly referencing my work okay um if if you play Dread X Collection, any of the collections, uh, remember the name Ted Hedgeke. Uh He's one of the I don't know what his exact title is. He's he's one of the staff members, one of the main staff members at Dread X. Okay. One of the most incredible people I've ever met. He was in Poland recently, aiding in the Ukraine crisis. Mm-hmm. Um, this is like an insane dude. But he has a policy where if you put him in your game, he'll buy you pizza. I've yet I've yet to find if that's a joke or not, but <laughs> play play any of the collections and just look for Ted's. Okay, you'll, you'll find Ted's everywhere, <laughs> <laughs> including We Never Left. We Never Left has multiple Ted's. Okay, there okay. there are a few Ted's. Oh, I love I love Ted. What a man! Oh, I he, look at. he sent. Oh, this is a story. I I sent him my build. He's not part of the QA staff at DreadX, but he's uh, he just likes playing the games. And I sent him We Never Left, and I asked him what he thought. And he was like, uh, oh, I liked it. Uh, so I sent it over to Bloober Team. They got me their notes here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are you aware of any familiar Bloober Team? No, I'm not. Uh, Layers of Fear, uh, Blair Witch. Oh, yes, um, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I sent it to Bloober Team. Uh, I got Just some like notes that. here. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay. Uh, so I have the Layers of Fear seal of approval. Um, also, also he, tr- he tried to send it to Dave Szymanski, which okay. I, I wanted to stop him because I look <laughs> up to David Szymanski quite a bit. <laughs> so it's a terrifying one. What's it like having notes from a, an actual, like respected, like big indie I team feel, like that? I feel better than everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a, it's very, it's very incredible. It feels amazing because I love layers of fear. Mm-hmm. Hearing from them was awesome. That was, that was definitely an experience. I, I dude, I can only imagine because I mean, I so I, I I didn't play it, but I did watch people play it because I knew I wouldn't play it if that makes sense. No, we Layers of Fear is definitely the type of game that works in a let's play yeah. uh, format because it is very walky. It is very Summerland in that respect. Uh, so I, I think you're getting a similar experience watching it. Uh, and I'll say the same thing about Summerland. Like if you watch Summerland, you're getting roughly the same experience. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, you're right. And I mean, aside from choice, there there's some little like choices that are like reflective of the player themselves. Mm-hmm. But you know, other than that, you're you're getting the story. With Summerland, one thing I noticed was speaking of choices, you did have choices in Summerland, but ultimately they didn't have a bearing on like the overall story. Does We Never Left or your next project have choices that might affect like have different endings or anything like that? We never left. No, okay. uh, other project. No idea. Okay. <laughs> uh, I I like I like incorporating some sort of player agency. Even though, in my opinion, the best narratives are the ones that are told. Like mm-hmm. if, if my favorite games have all been ones that have like a set narrative, mm-hmm. and I think that lets you focus in on one story that works the way you know it should work. Sure. Um, I say that, and then I have like some of my favorite games of all time are purely based on screwing that up. But. <laughs> I mean, I don't th- expect anything like Mass Effect level, you know, having no, no. You know, um, all these different choices. Yeah, I, am and endings, fan, but... I am a fan of singular narrative, and sure. I always have been. This is semi on topic, but have you played um, 
Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe Edition yet? Not yet, but I'm I'm dying to to start going through it because the amount of just the stuff they've added um, compared I did, to the original. I didn't one. even know it was coming out. I I, I didn't knew, either. I was aware I was aware that it existed um, and that it had been delayed like three times, and I didn't know it was set to release. I just happened to be on Steam the day it came out, and I and I bought it, and it's so worth it. Okay, I'll, I, I'll, I have, next paycheck. That's what I'm spending my money. I'm on I'm obsessed it's... with the Stanley Parable. It's one of my favorite games, and I, I'm saying that as in like it is not a singular narrative by any means. No, it is meant a... <laughs> to deconstruct that idea. Um, but typically, my favorite games are like the solo narratives told one story. Mm-hmm. They get what they want to say across, and then move on. You know, it's funny that you mentioned uh, Stanley Parable because I remember playing that. I think it first came out. I think I was in college at the time, and it blew my mind because oh, of how many, like, how different even one tiny choice can just take an entire story and still yeah. you know, repeat it and have still an insanely different experience. That game is genius. Yes, uh, that game really is genius in the way it um, it does, it has a commentary on player agency and the games industry itself. The, mm-hmm. the second game is much more um, on the games industry. Okay. Rather than that, the first game's idea of like player choice, and I'm not. I mean, I'm not spoiling anything, but the Stanley right. Parable Ultra Deluxe is very much like its own game. Okay. I like kind of figured the way people talked about it. You can you can download it and then never touch the first Stanley Parable, but in essence, it's its own game. That's that. It's I so hard. To, am... It's so hard to explain to someone. It's really the type of game <laughs> you got to go in blind. You, I mean, if you're listening and you've never even touched Stanley Parable, first of all, what's wrong with you? Second oh, of all, you have to go and experience it because it's it's one of those experiences. Like when you first play it, you're gonna be like, "That's it," and then you just, it's you just have to keep playing it, and then it's it it becomes mind blowingly just. I can't like I can only imagine the scripting they have to do behind the scenes to be accomplish a game like that. This this is such. Oh, uh, I, I have to be so vague with the Ultra Deluxe Edition because it is so off the wall and I don't want to give anything away about it. But like if you've never touched the Stanley Parable in your life, I would say don't even get the original and just get the Ultra Deluxe. However, if you have played the original, I think it will it, it will greatly Ben, it'll make the second one feel so much better. It'll make the Ultra Deluxe feel so so much more. Kind of like a, I don't know the only one that's going to mind. It's like Portal One, Portal Two situation. But uh, not even. It's just, it's okay. so well, hard even to even even more unique than. It's so weird. It's such a weird way to do like an expanded. I'm like watching my words because I, <laughs> I don't want to say anything that can spoil anything. Uh, I'm going to stop talking about it before okay, I say something. Okay, we can stop talking. We can stop talking about it. Now, you said uh, I can't remember if it was before we hit record or after that you're working on like three different things yeah. currently. So, are you including We Never Left, or th- you're not including We Never Left? In I, I am. You I, are. Okay. There's a rough estimate because I'm always doing so much stuff. I, we We Never Left, the other game, and then I got I got some music stuff I'm doing, but like that's mm-hmm. so so far off from anything worth releasing. Uh, it's like it's like one or one and a half songs, if even. So uh, yeah, so not worth talking about then. The the no third, no I got the third nothing. project. We got nothing. Okay, <laughs> I, I am working on it, on it like more of as a band this time though, which is awesome. So what's that have, like working as a collaborating? A, a weight off my shoulders. Okay, because yeah. the some of the people that I'm playing with are so much more talented than me in so many more things, um, and I'm still I'm still doing a lot of, a lot of it. I, I I generally come up with like the base idea of the track. I record. Mm-hmm. Um, the initial samples and I structure it and get like where the things should go and where what should be. Then I kind of communicate it to others. Mm-hmm. And then the skeleton of a song gets sent back to me as like a full blown track. And I'm like in awe. It's crazy. Um, but it's, uh, it's definitely a collaborative effort. Uh, and I'm, I'm so happy to have that. It, it, it is a weight off my shoulders. I said it, but <laughs> so you don't feel like, uh, what, how, how do I want to word this? Um, 
Do you think we could expect it in, let's say, if, at this current pace within a, a two to three year time frame as opposed to... Who knows? Okay. <laughs> Who knows? I don't have release dates on anything until it's like done. Sure, sure. Understood. That's the, that's the way I've always treated my stuff. Mostly because I don't want to do delays. I hate I hate delays, and I don't want to put delays on my products. So I, I, I didn't announce the release date of Summerland until it was like done, done, like ready to go. Um, and that gives me so much time to just tinker with it. That reminds me of a question I wanted to ask earlier. Because Summerland, yeah. you put out a TikTok for voice actors, got a lot of buzz. Um, around the game itself that way. Um, yeah. Can we expect a similar similar campaign for your the next project? Well, I did the same thing for We Never Left. Okay. I I opened up for We Never Left. I did end up casting outside of that, okay. um, which was absurd. I, do you know the voice actors for the upcoming game? No, I don't. I, like, when you announced it, yeah. I'm like, I'm... I, I I was kind of shocked when I saw that you announced uh, We Never Left. I'm like, whoa, I didn't expect something from yeah, Connor no, so soon. The, the voice cast is um, ki- kind of like big name when it comes to the voice acting world. And I was I was very surprised when I was able to get in contact. Uh, so for, first we have Jenny Yokobori, okay. who um, voices in Genshin Impact most prominently. Um, I don't. I don't remember her character's name. She's been okay. in a lot of stuff. She she's in Hello Kitty. I know, uh, The Simpsons. She was in an episode or two. Um, she was in wow. an episode of Bob's Burgers, I think. Uh, but she reached out to me on Twitter and asked to act as casting director. Um, and I was I was very happy to hear that. Uh, so we collaborated, and she reached out to the other two actors for the game, mm-hmm. uh, Jonah Scott, first of all. Who I feel like is I know that name. Mo- most known for his role in Beastars. Okay. He, he's Lagoshi in Beastars. Um, and Aiden Aiden in Dying Light 2. That's the, the right. Yeah, because yeah. I remember you announced that. And I was like, my mind was blown. Yeah, no, he is prominently, he's one of the lead star actors of the game. Uh, does a phenomenal job. It is incredible uh, how well he did. And most of his lines were like second, third takes. Mm-hmm. Like, he wow. nails it. Man nails it. Make fun of me all you want, but uh, I have watched Beastars, and I do enjoy Beastars very much. Such a good show. Such an overhated show. It is so good. Uh, But one of the first things that stood out to me was his voice acting and how unique it felt. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, anime voice acting, you like, it has a sound to it. Yeah, You expect to hear something. He sounds different in a way that I really like. He he was also, uh, he had a role in Attack on Titan, I know, uh, and... An anime on Netflix, which is very underrated, called Super Crooks. I haven't seen Super Crooks. It, it's like semi-related to that one, like Mars superhero show Netflix had. I, it, to I my understanding, and I have a very limited knowledge. I think that the Super Crooks visual novel was written by the same dude that wrote the Kick-Ass visual novel. Oh, and then it was adapted into an anime on Netflix. Okay. Wow. I think that's it. That's anyways. quite a connection then. Okay. I think that's it anyways. But yeah, he's in that. And then uh, the last role went to YouTuber uh, Garrett Watts. I feel like I knew who, that name. He, he was part of like uh, a, a group back in the day um, that's okay. since disbanded. But he, uh, he's, very, he's very beloved in the YouTube community to my knowledge. Uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't like very aware of his content mm-hmm. before this. Uh, but... I mean, I've been told by friends of mine that they love him and that he's like their comfort YouTuber, which um, which is it's awesome to be in contact with him now. And we we still talk. He we message back and forth sometimes. He's one of the sweetest people I've ever met. Like legitimately, he is so nice. I cannot wait to to dive into We Never Left because I forgot. Gosh, man. Because I remember, I don't know if it was for We Never Left or not, because you put a tweet out there, you were asking for Ryan Reynolds. Was it for that project? Yeah, it's for We Never Left. I thought that would be very funny. I did not expect to get Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> but if you did, how, how? I mean, that would have been, because you never know. I would have had him voice every role. <laughs> I would have had Ryan Reynolds voice every role, but do like funny voices while he did it. Sure, sure. So he Why could just not? be every character. Like, oh, I'm, I'm Michael. Like, oh, my name is the doctor. Like, oh, they're doctor. 
I think that'd be so funny. That would have been fantastic. I mean, yeah, I was rooting for you. I was rooting for you, you know? Worst, yeah, it worst case, it was a funny ad campaign for the game. Absolutely. And the trailer for We Never Left blown up, too. I'm very happy about that one. I was going to uh, say that the, that the Ryan Reynolds thing, is that how or why Jenny reached out to you? Or was it even before that? Oh, I think I don't think that was the reason. I think okay, I think she just saw it and was like, "Oh, I'd, I'd really like to be part of this project." They were all so nice about it. All the voice actors were so like understanding that this is like a short-term college project, mm-hmm. and that like, they, and they seem to love the script. And they're such nice people, just in general. Because I was going to say, you, the, even the voice actor you got for Summerland did a fantastic job, also. No, I know that's a uh, Reese. Um, Oh God! I keep seeing his tweets. Re, re, oh, I feel awful. Why can't I think of his last name? I'm having a total like malfunction. Oh, hold on, Reese David. Reese David. Jeez. God, I'm a horrible employer. <laughs> I was gonna say like you end up getting some like really like decent names and and decent people to to do these projects with you. Like it's and it's insane. I don't know how. <laughs> I was going to ask you, what's your secret? I don't know. <laughs> I do not. I apologize. I wish I had better answers. No, you're good. You're good because it just happens, man. Like uh, sometimes it, stuff just falls into yeah. place. No, we never left those sitting at some uh, currently almost 10,000 views on the YouTube uh, trailer, which is very nice. exciting. Very nice. Is that your highest view trailer so far on YouTube? Yeah. No, that's, uh, that's above Summerland. Wow. Summerland capped off at like 6.3, I think. And that's still impressive. Yeah, right right now we're at 9.5. And it is steadily increasing. So I'm expecting to hit 10,000 at some point. Fingers crossed. I think you will. So, I mean, I think... So really quick, uh, what was the feedback you got on Summerland from the general public like after it released? I meant to ask you that and I forgot. Um, very, very positive. A lot of that okay. was incredibly positive. I, I hit one of my goals as a game developer, which is to make someone's favorite game of all time. Mm-hmm. I got, a, I got a few of those messages, which made me very happy. Oh, very uh, nice. Summerland is a few people out there's favorite game. Uh, a lot, a lot of very, very incredibly negative reviews. <laughs> really? <laughs> Some people are mean, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, man, I'm sorry to hear that because that was an incredible experience. Well, I thought so. Summerland was an incredible experience. Your, your review is in the Steam page. It is? I haven't even looked. Oh, no, you, you said you were going to do that, I believe, but I never even looked. Yeah, go to, go to the Steam page. Your review is there. You, you gave it an 8.5. I'm reading it right now. I did. I, I mean, I remember I had a great time with it. It was a fantastic time. I think the only negative I had was I think I experienced some bugs, which you fixed after release anyway. So I'm assuming it's a 10 now, right? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Make it true. I expect nothing less. <laughs> <laughs> nothing less. But no, perfection. it's sitting at some really awesome reviews. It is a ninety percent all time positive and ninety six ninety six percent recent positive. That's incredible, bro! Uh, uh, congratulations, man. That's high, amazing. Which is incredibly high, which I'm very happy for. Not everyone can say that. No, no. I I see some like big AAA games like advertising their like eighty five percent positive review. I'm like, well, uh, <laughs> you know, and that was my high school project. I'm, I'm very excited to see what I can do next. I, I'm, I'm excited to see what you can do next because I, I always look forward to every project you do, whether it's a game or music uh, project. I'm, I'm very much in the mindset right now that I'm gonna, just going to get more and more ambitious until it kills me. <laughs> Like every every game I'm making so far has been more and well, actually that's a lie because Welcome to the Dreamscape I think was a lot more ambitious than Summerland. Yeah, yeah, it was. I I remember playing it. Um, I, I Summerland is by far the superior product, but no offense. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, I I narrowed down on what I was good at, and I'm kind of expanding on what I'm good at in a way here. That's good. Um, and trying to bring back a few of those elements from Welcome to the Dreamscape. Don't run away mm-hmm. yet. I'm, I'm trying to bring away some of the, bring back some of those elements from Welcome to the Dreamscape, but with a more polished, more um, focused lens, mm-hmm. where I, like I kind of know more what I'm going to do with it, and I have like some more refined systems in place, um, and not lean on those systems as much. It's definitely going to be a narrative, but I'm excited to see what it does. We we have a code name for it. I'll probably talk to you more 
outside of review context, but sure, sure, not a problem. Because I do, I do want to have you on again after We Never Left comes out, and I've played a, a it. retrospective. Yes, yes, because I would like yeah. to play it and then discuss it. Because I feel like we can't really discuss much right now outside of. It's coming. Here's kind of the general yeah. idea. Blah blah blah. You, you should totally. And I. This isn't coming from a place of like I. I am contracted under them now. <laughs> you should totally check out the other collections. I will. I definitely will. If, because if you can, if you could like afford to like pick up a few of them, they are more than worth it. Collect, collections two, will. two and uh, two and three are my favorites. Okay. I'll check them out. There, there is an overarching narrative, which, you know, check out. But but I'm going to do five first once that hits and then uh, go from there. No, go, go in order. Right now? One, like one, right now? One through four. <laughs> okay, I will do it. They're, they're I will like do 10 it. 10 bucks each. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, I can do that. Oh, you know, you know who is one of the developers that's like been big in the Dreadx? Uh, Akuma Kira. Uh, do, do you know Akuma Kira? Um, Spooky's House of Jump Scares or slash Spooky's yes. House of Scare Mansion? Yes. Um, also, also Lost in Vivo. Okay. That was okay. another uh, Akuma Kira project. Uh, they've been big in the collections. They actually made the hub world for three. Okay. So, like, the, the main hub for t- Collection 3 is by Akuma Kira. They did a game for Collection 4, um, which was probably my favorite in the fourth collection. It's called uh, – oh, what's it even called? Because I remember I, I went into it, like, n- expecting that not to be, like, one of my top ones and it ended up being my favorite. I also just played um, Lost in Vivo by them, and I thought it was phenomenal. I, I I haven't played that. So what'd you think? You you Tenna sixty four. That was that was theirs. Okay. Lost in Vivo, uh, amazing horror game. It is so reminiscent of like Silent Hill. Um, and I I've become very desensitized to horror games, and I, I consider mm-hmm. myself a veteran of playing the genre. <laughs> um, but this game scared me. Like this game this game oh, made like, me like have a few game. have a few like. Anxiety moments. <laughs> you know that Ralph Wiggum meme where he's in the back of the bus and he's like, I'm in danger. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's, that's how I felt like Lost in Vivo. Okay. Wait, have you played Doki Doki Literature Club? Uh, I know. I haven't played it myself, but I know what okay. it is. I know, okay. like, the gist of it. Okay. I have played that. Cause I was just going through the horror tag on yeah. Ichio and that came up. I'm like, I have played that. All right. We reviewed I have a, it on I have the a show. Question. I have a yes. question for you. Uh, so do you have steam open right now? I do. I would like you to go to the dread X collection five page. Okay. Collection five. Okay. I'm on there. All right. I'd like you to go to the description and tell me if there are any games down there that you, you feel strongly about. There's anything there that's like catching your eye. Okay. I did talk about Hans body already because it had very, um, midsummer type. Uh huh feel to it i will preface by saying every game here is amazing like i i've i've not seen much of some of them but everything i have seen are like crazy good vestige jumps out to me for sure vestige yes i've Dude, I've seen so little of it. Really? Okay, so that's one of the ones you don't know about. Yeah, too it's much. like a mystery to me. I, okay. the dude, um, we have a Discord for DreadX. Um, we, a lot of us, will post like our screenshots and stuff. He hasn't posted much. Wow. So that he, it's just, it'll be a surprise like, then. He posts like two videos, and okay, uh, I'm I'm incredibly excited because it looks really good. <laughs> um, okay. Um, what about um, Gallery? That's uh, by Shackles. Uh, he he has a game. I don't think it got big. I don't think it was like a big game, but I did play it before um, called Totem. Okay. Which is a very creative horror. It's like a monster game about linguistics. Interesting. And you, there are three different levels um, where you have to come in contact with some like towering monster. And you have to decipher its language to communicate with it. That's you. That's unique. And you're, and you're and given the tools cool. to like decipher to English, um, and a method to communicate. But you have to communicate properly, or it kills you. No pressure. <laughs> um, it's very difficult. 
It is like actual language translation. You know, I've been. That sounds. I might. I might pick that up actually because that sounds. I got it in like a bundle. I got it in some kind of bundle, and I remember loving it. And was like, "What? Why is this developer not doing more things?" And then I got to meet them, and I was like, "Oh wow, <laughs> crazy!" It definitely sent you a link to it. It's very good. Yes, please do. Please do. Um, the launch really has twenty three thousand views. That's not bad. I did play Slenderman back in the day, back when that was a thing. I I struggle to even count that as horror. It, I, it doesn't. It never scared me. The the main game that hit consoles. Cause I think I can't remember that because that one had. I don't even remember that. Because there was the normal one that everyone loved, but then they came out with like a full fledged. Yeah, like the arrival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The arrival scarier, in my opinion. I just te- I just sent you Totem over Discord because okay, if you sweet. if you're interested, I am not ashamed to say I could not solve any of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was unable to figure out any of the puzzles. But uh, not saying you won't. You're probably a smarter individual than I am. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, I have good. I um. I'm I like I. I want to refrain from calling it horror, but I think it's more thriller. But Alan Wake, I remember playing that back in the day. It's as a well. horror game. It's very Twin Peaks. Yes, yes, it is. Which I, I very weird. Which is what I loved about it. I'm so excited for you to play We Never Left. I'm so excited to hear your thoughts. I hope it comes out on the 20th. I really do. If it does, the 20th. I'll be in Florida at the time, but I'll. What, what day is the 20th? On a Friday. Then I really hope it's. It's probably gonna be the 20th, but we'll see. Okay. Keep me updated. I won't be near my PC until the 4th of June. Okay. Okay, so I'll, and I I'll, I'll definitely play it then when I come back and we can discuss it after I finish. I really it. and I really want to talk to you more about the other thing that I'm working on. Okay, will you have more information for me by then? Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, well, dude, we've been at this for roughly an hour and unfortunately yeah. I do need to go to bed. <laughs> okay. Sleep, yes, old man. I uh, yeah, yeah, and have working that full time job. Gotta love oh, it. Disgusting. Keep up with the indie games, man. I can't wait I to will. talk to you again. Um, congratulations on finishing another project as well. Thank you, thank You're you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you very much for having me. I always enjoy coming on. I, I love having you on. So you yeah, are, you're one of my only uh, game dev consistencies. <laughs> <laughs> you, this is your. I, I want to say fourth time on the show now. Maybe I don't know. Uh, which I don't know. I it's up there as I don't think you're in the lead for most guest appearances, but it's up there. Well, let me, what do you think? It's maybe fifth. So I think I did. I think I did Dreamscape, Summerland. I yes. think we did a Summerland yes. retrospective, and yes. then. Uh, album. So I think album. this will be the fifth, be the fifth the time. So I, you may you may tie for the most appearances then. Oh, God, I can. Yeah. All right, yeah. we're gonna have the We Never Left retrospective, and we're gonna top it. Okay, sounds good, man. I will talk to you in roughly a month from now. For sure. All Let's right. Let's do it. All right, and as Thank always, oh, anytime, Rand. Have a great day.